Welcome at last to the tutorial on how to do 3D transitions, 3D animations here in Photoshop. All right, we're going to start off with this photo here uh, in front of the St. George Brewery in Addis Ababa. I figured if I'm going to make you sit through these tutorials at the very least, I might as well give you something fun to look at. Anyway, once again, what's the first thing you do? Yes, Control-J, yay! You guys are going to be muttering that in your sleep here by the end of the semester. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to extract these fine people here from the photo, and we're going to put them on another layer. That way we can get that nice 3D effect. So, first thing you're doing up here, remember this, this is your quick selection tool. You are going to use this. Okay. Start selecting the people in the foreground. Let's just do this quick. It's a bit much. Remember the bracket keys that are above the enter key. Make your brush larger and smaller. We're going to go down the hand there, out of this person. There we go. To his hand, onto the pants. Then if you want to deselect, you hit the Alt key. Remember, see? All of a sudden it turns into a little minus sign. That means that we are subtracting from the selection. Okay, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. Get rid of this space in between here. Keep on going. It's going a little slow mainly because, well, I am recording this. All right. And get rid of all of this. I think you got a little bit too much there. Yep. All right. So one last little bit. All right. So now we are going to go to Refine Edge, and we see, no surprise, looks pretty cruddy. Right. We're gonna draw in around there. Come on, we can get more of his face in there than that. Come on, here we go, on the head. Crank up the contrast, and the details start to come back. Right, on the hand, on the face, on this nimbus of hair there, on the back of the leg, on the hands. We're going to even out all of these corners here, so we get a much better selection. Also, so the man does not have a bite missing out of his knee. Most people don't like to have their knees bitten like that. Right, we'll do around the face again. That's a very chaotic area. The computer's having a hard time separating it from the rest of everything. Oh, that was a bit much. Come on, I don't want to slice her woman's hand off like that. All right, we are seeing that this is starting to get a little bit better. Yahoo. Okay, around the head. Once more with feeling. Whoa, it's a bit much. All right. Good enough for right now. Let's crank up the contrast a little bit more. Feather the edge a little bit. Smooth the edges a little bit here. Okay. Shift the edge out just a little bit, and it's uh, about right. Okay, now what we're going to be doing is we are going to be putting this onto an entirely new layer. Check it out. Boing! It shows up there. Now, how do we know that this is on a new layer? Well, if we turn off the background, there we see it. Ha ha! Okay. Okay, next thing, we are going to be using a feature that I had tried to show you before called Content Aware Phil. No, it's not a guy named Phil who's aware of the content. All it is, and we're going to make a very rough selection here, is it's kind of a cool way... Boy, that's really a sloppy selection. It's kind of a cool way to be able to fill in the blanks in a photo. Um, basically, what we're going to be looking at... Oh, I'm sorry there. Fill. 
content aware. Okay, it's going to think about, hey, wait a minute. On the wrong layer. Sorry, folks. Okay. This one. There. Now, all of a sudden, we have, ta-da, people no longer there. Wow. Okay. Next layer we're going to do, it's going to be a type layer. Okay. So we are going to draw here. We're going to write something rather silly in kind of a cursive script. Uh, I crank the point size up so we can see it as we're typing. Say about 50. I'm going to call it um, St. George. That's a little bit big. Take that down a little bit. Yeah, okay, that's about right. All right, take it down a little bit further. Let's get a slightly different typeface so you can start seeing. There we go. Jeez. All right. If I'm stumbling along like this, does this make you feel better or worse? Look at that. Okay. Very nice. All right, so we've got this. We are going to change the color. Come on. Change the color, we're going to put it into like kind of a blue. Just to make it pop against this background a little bit. All right, take a look at that. Fair enough. Now, what are we going to do with this rascal after we drag it up to the top of the layer stack? Yes, that's right. We are going to turn it as a 3D extrusion. Yes, I would like to change to the 3D workspace. Fair enough. Okay. Now you're going to see some things here that are going to be a little bit unfamiliar. There's the grid system here at the bottom that kind of is trying to tell you where you are, what you're looking at. You're seeing your letters extruded like this. They've got a little bit of depth on that. Okay. Up here in the top, there's camera. Then there's also coordinates. Coordinates tell you where you are on this mesh. We're going to get back to that Camera is basically telling you if you're looking at something in 3D space, here's a camera. Here's how you look at this, okay? All right, you're still going to see channels, layers, all those other things that you're, you're familiar with. Now, on the 3D layer panel, all this stuff over here, don't worry about that right now. That is not something that you need to know, okay? Uh... These are filter by materials. These are basically filters. If you're, you're uh, going to be doing some really complex stuff here, um, we are not going to be getting that far into it. If you would like to play with this, uh, please feel free. Uh, it can be a lot of fun. It can also really just completely eat your life alive. We're looking at things through the default camera right now under properties. Like I said, coordinates up here. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. If you wind up really screwing things up, um, always, like I say, remember, uh, control Z is your friend. Okay. So the first thing we're going to try to do here is try to normalize the relationship with where these words are on the photo. Okay. Okay. First thing we're going to do is control how much depth there is on these letters over here. So right now we're on current view. Click over onto whatever it is that you've typed there. You're going to see up here things have changed. Whoa, what a shock. Okay, extrusion depth is what we want to take a look at. You can change it this way. Whoa, you can change it that way. Back and forth it looks like. The effects on the titles on that old movie, Superman. Well, kind of dating myself on that one. 
All right, so let's leave her somewhere around maybe 80, 90. Uh, that way you've got enough depth, but it's not going to be completely unwieldy once we start getting into moving things around, okay? All right, now here's an explanation of the current view. This is going to be something that we're going to be working with a lot here, okay? When we have current view, uh, that is basically where the camera is at that moment. We are just going to be animating the camera moving across this landscape. Okay, folks? All right. So next what we're going to do is we're going to select a bunch of the layers and we're going to turn them into what are known as postcards uh, and put them on the mesh as well. Putting something as a postcard is basically saying, I'm going to take this little piece of two-dimensional stuff here and put it in three-dimensional space as though it was a postcard and I was sticking it on a tabletop. Okay? Okay, some of the more perceptive of you might have noticed that now that we've given these letters depth, they appear to be casting shadows. Here's a cool thing that you can play around with. Over here in the panel where it says infinite light, click on that. Check this out. This is your light source, and you can move it around to control where the shadows are and how far they fall. Whoops. Hang on a second, try that again. Make sure you don't click around here too much. So you can even have the shadows falling on the people in the background, although I don't think I'll do that because, again, that'll probably just drive my computer nuts and make my video cards glow red hot. But right here, I kind of like something a little bit more dramatic, just since, why not? And I'll have it cast a shadow like that. Okay, look good? All right. So back to this layer. Now, up here at the top, you're going to see all of our little controls for dealing with 3D. Rotate the object, roll the object, drag the object, slide the object, scale the object. These are the things that we're going to be doing. Remember what I said about X, Y, and Z. The Z axis is the one that we want to be concerned with now. Okay? So what we're going to try to do is we are going to drag these words here so that they're a little bit closer to us. All right, so we're going to grab them. Oops, not that. We don't want to rotate them. We want to drag them on the Z axis, okay? Move on Z axis. So we move it closer to us. We can see all of a sudden it's coming out of the photo. Move it back, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you can also move it around this, like that. Uh, move on the y-axis. Up and down, up and down. Notice how the shadows are moving on the pavement behind them. We're even casting shadows in the background. It's kind of on the mesh layer, if you can see that. And then you can also move it... Uh, back and forth on the y-axis, okay? So over here, these are the same controls, okay? Although that gives you some really funky results, and you probably don't want to do it all that much. Okay, so let's try about right there, I think, is going to be a nice place to start with. Yeah, that's a little bit much. Let's try that. Rotation. All right. Good enough. Good enough. Okay. Now that we've got these things arranged, now comes the time to turn the other two layers, these over here, the people and the background, into their own 3D postcards. Again, all we're doing is we're turning this layer here with an image on it, which is these people walking and the background, we're going to turn that into its own 3D layer so we can start playing with it. Uh, one thing, before we start uh, playing with this too much, uh, just to differentiate this a little bit, 
I'm just going to put on one of those effects that we're now becoming very, very familiar with, black and white, onto the background layer. So now the color that we have on the text and the color that we have on the people walking around, it all looks like it's really popping out from this nice background there, okay? All right, so what we're going to do is first we're going to take this background layer. Uh, we don't need it anymore, so we're going to trash that. And next what we're going to do is we're going to merge the background layer with the black and white effect. So holding down the shift key again, select the two layers. Okay, so you got both of them, the uh, regular layer and the black and white layer. You can tell it's black and white by doing that. You turn it off, turn it on, it goes black and white, okay. Got both of those layers selected. Go on up to the layer menu. Go on down to merge layers. You can also hit option E to do that. Boink, you do that. All right, so now what that does is that locks in the effect that you've put on the layer. You can no longer edit the black and white or adjust the color on that when you merge these layers. That's basically saying, hey, look, I want to lock in these changes that I've made to it. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn these into this layer here into a postcard. Okay. So again, up to 3D, new mesh from layer, postcard. There you go. Okay. So look down here. Everybody's got these little textures, diffuse, and the name of the layer on there. Okay. Got all that? All right. So now we're going to merge these layers in 3D. Uh, this is a little bit different. We're not going to be making irretrievable changes here, but what we are going to be doing is just making sure that when we go to the timeline, we have something clean. We don't have three tracks on the timeline. So hold down the shift key. You select all the layers, all one, two, three, all of them like that. Go to 3D, merge 3D layers. Okay. Little spinny thing comes on the uh, screen and hey, there we go. Wait a minute. The people just disappeared. What's going on? Oh no, I've completely screwed things up. Professor Dave, help me. All right. Look, let's take a look at these. Hey, all the layers are there under the 3D panel. Twirl them down. And this is where we can start having some fun. Okay. All right. So you'll see here on top of the 3D panel, you have filters, filter by whole scene, blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. What we're going to do here is we're going to start moving things around. Okay. So click on your background layer. This one here is the black and white layer. And then what you're going to do, make sure that you have the tool here, this one here, slide the 3D object. All right. So move on the Z axis. When you do that, it seems to fade into the background. It's getting smaller. What could that mean? We're moving it in 3D space. We're going to take a different view in a second to take a look at this. Okay, next we're going to twirl this down so we don't need to see all of that. Here is the layer one mesh. We have selected the people moving on Z axis, moving them back and forth. Now, how can we tell where they are? See over here, this little thing called current view. This is the main thing that we're going to be playing with. All right, this is going to be fun for you. Go on up to the top. See this little icon here, a little circle with the swirly thing around it. This is rotate the 3D object. You come onto the uh, photo here and you start moving it around. And that's where you start seeing the space. Okay, you can do all kinds of crazy things to it. But mainly what we're going to be doing is getting a view for this to try to figure out how far away everything is. All right. So this is a kind of good view. Gives you a little bit of a sense of the 3D environment that we're looking at. Everybody got that. Okay. All right. Current view up here. Rotate. Current view. Rotate. All right. We like that. Now, now that we have a little bit better view of like where these things are in space, we can start moving them around a little bit more on their Z axis. The Z axis is the one that makes it in 3D space closer to you, further away, closer to you, further away. Okay. All right. 
We're going to take a look at this with first the words, the little caption, the titling that we got there. All right, go back up here to this one here, slide the 3D object, okay? You see these little green arrows here? Green, red, blue, move on Z-axis. If you're on Z-axis, you can pull it forward. If you're on the Y-axis, you can pull it up and down. If you're on the Z-axis, or X-axis, excuse me, you can move it back and forth. Another place you can do that is up here in the Properties panel. If you hover your little fingertip over that and start moving around, you can do it that way too, or you can also get really precise by putting numbers in there, okay? Why, da 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 da, da. you can start having a lot of fun. So we're going to move our letters a little bit forward. I'd say, let's try right about to there, maybe a little further. I ran out of room to scroll there. Fine, we've got the letters really far forward. The background here, we want to push that way to the back, okay? So we can do that by clicking on it directly and moving it on the Z-axis, okay? Uh, let's see, or once again, we can do this by doing the coordinates here, back and forth, back and forth, okay? Do this for each one. Uh, take this back a little bit, about halfway between the letters and the background. Well, this looks a little odd. How do we actually get to see this thing? How do we actually figure out what it's looking like from our camera's perspective? Okay, go back to current view. Current view, like this. Go back to the little camera here. We've got it on custom view. Okay, this is gonna be cool. Click on default camera. View. Was that cool or what? Come on, man. That was cool. <sighs> you people, I tell you. All right. So now we've got the custom view. And there we can move it around. We're actually moving our perspective on it, which is what we're going to be doing once we start animating this on the timeline. And you can get a sense for this by moving it around. Okay. See, you're starting to see these people seeming to move against the background while these letters are floating in front of them. There's one problem still. That's that the background is kind of small in the image, isn't it? Well, we can change that. 